Hey everybody, today we're doing another example of curve sketching. This time we're starting with a function itself, not just information about a function. f of x equal x squared over x minus 3. To save us a little time, I've given us the first two derivatives, um, f prime and f double prime. Of course, you get that by doing a quotient rule, a little bit of algebra to simplify, and then another quotient rule and a little more algebra. When we want to sketch a, a graph from, from a given function, we always want to start with what the things we can discern about the function itself, just without looking at the derivatives. In particular, we should plot any obvious points. Usually that just means intercepts. So here I see that when x is 0, y is 0, that'll be both of my intercepts. It's going to pass through the origin. Let's plot that. The next thing I see looking at this function is that there's going to be a vertical asymptote at 3. At x equals 3, the denominator is 0. The numerator is not. Like that. Now I think about horizontal asymptotes and behavior of this function. What happens is x goes to infinity or negative infinity. So limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. First of all, I notice that when x gets bigger and bigger, both the numerator and denominator are going to infinity. This is an infinity over infinity form. It's going to be indeterminate. We have to do a little more work. Of course, there's many ways of evaluating that limit. Let's do it the most basic way right here. Look at the highest power in the denominator, x to the first, and divide that out from both the top and the bottom. When I divide it out of the top, Dividing the top by x, I just get x. When I divide the bottom by x, I get 1 minus 3 over x. Divide this by x, divide that by, that by x. Now, as x goes to infinity, 3 over x goes to 0, so the denominator is just going to be 1. While the numerator, x, grows without bound. Overall, this limit will be positive infinity. As x gets bigger and bigger, y gets bigger and bigger. On the right side of the graph, it's going to go off in that direction. So there's not going to be a horizontal asymptote in that direction. The value of the function is just going to increase without bound. Similarly, we need to look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity. And that's done exactly the same way, and in this case we get negative infinity. That means that when x goes, gets further and further to the left, y gets further and further down, it's going to go kind of like that. This is a place where we could talk about slant asymptotes. We're not going to do it in, in this lecture. OK, now we've plotted the obvious points. We've looked at horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Now it's time to think in terms of first derivative stuff. Where's the function increasing? Where's it decreasing? So. I need to know where f prime is positive and where it's negative. I'm going to make a sign chart. I'm going to plot the cut points. What are the cut points? It's going to be where, the, where f prime is 0 and where it does not exist. It's 0 at 0 and 6. It does not exist at x equals 3. Here's my number line. Here are the points 0, 3, and 6. And whenever I do a sign chart, I always explicitly write down the thing whose sign I'm trying to find. There's a lot of functions floating around here. I don't want to get them confused, especially because I'm going to be making more than one sign chart in this problem. So x times x minus 6 over x minus 3. Let's pick a point in each interval, plug it in, and see whether we get a positive or negative. Starting over here, let's look at x equals minus 1. Remember, we don't actually care what the value of f prime is at any of these values. We just care if it's positive or negative. So I'm really just going to be thinking in terms of pluses and minuses. When x is negative 1, I have a negative times a negative over a positive. So that's a positive. So the function is going to be increasing there. At x equals 1, now it's a positive times a negative over a positive. At 
and that's going to be negative. Moving on, x equals 4, positive, negative, positive. So I get a negative again. You can't assume it's just going to go positive, negative, positive, negative. It doesn't always have to alternate. You've got to check a point in each interval. Finally, we look at x equals 7, and we get a positive times a positive over a positive. The derivative is positive there. So we know not, now know where the derivative is positive and negative. That tells us where the function is increasing and decreasing. Let's label that over here. From negative infinity to zero, it's going to be increasing. From zero to three, increasing. From three to six, increasing. And then from six to infinity, I wrote that wrong, sorry. From zero to three, decreasing. From three to six, decreasing. And then from six to infinity, increasing. Increasing wherever the derivative is positive, decreasing wherever the derivative is negative. Fantastic. Now we've got to look at the second derivative. Now we're making a sign chart for f double prime. We need to know where the second derivative is positive, where it's negative. That's going to tell us where the graph is concave up and where it's concave down. Again, I want to explicitly write down the function that I'm testing, 18 over x minus 3 cubed. This graph, or this function is only going to have one cut point. The numerator is never 0. 18 is never equal to 0. The denominator is 0 and x is equal to 3. Let's label that and check one value in each of these two intervals. Let's check x equals 0. That's a simple one to plug in. When we do that, we get 18 over negative 3 cubed. That's going to be a negative. Positive over negative 3 cubed, negative 3, positive 9, negative 27, so positive over negative. And when we plug in x equals 4, now we have 18 over 1 cubed, so that's definitely going to be positive. Coming back over to the, the in-progress sketch, Wherever we see a minus for the second derivative, we're noting that the graph is going to be concave down. So from 0 to 3, it's concave down. And from 3 on, it's concave up. Now we're going to go through and look at the combinations of increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down which will give us a general feel for what the graph has to look like on those intervals. So first of all, when x is less than 0, increasing concave down. That's going to look like this. Next, from 0 to 3, decreasing concave down like that. Next, from 3 to 6, it's going to be decreasing concave up like that. I'm going to draw a little bit less rectangular. And then finally, increasing in concave up like that. OK, now what I want to do is to take these general shapes, put them up here so that they connect with the dots and the asymptotes. So between negative infinity and 0, Starting down here, we're going to go increasing concave down like this. Notice that at x equals 0, the graph changes from increasing to decreasing. That's going to give me a local max. Then between 0 and 3, decreasing concave down. I need to connect that with this vertical asymptote that I have at x equals 3. We're going like this. So that's what the graph looks like over here. Now we look between 3 and 6, decreasing concave up. Of course, we're coming from a vertical asymptote. Um, 
at x equals 6. By the way, we're going to have 36 over 12, so y should be, sorry, 36 over 3, so y should be 12. Let's go ahead and plot that here. I'm going to plot that because I know that's where the graph changes from decreasing to increasing. That's where I'm going to have a local minimum. And then finally, after that, the graph grows without bound as I go to the right. As x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity. This is generally what the graph is going to look like. Before we end this video, let's take a quick look at an actual plot of this graph. Here I'm showing it to you on GeoGebra. You can see it looks very similar to what I just sketched. It turns out that there are what we call slant asymptotes as we go to negative infinity and positive infinity. This graph is going to get closer and closer to a, a line, a, a non-zero slant.